Hello students and welcome to the next lesson in our AS Physical Geography course. Today we're going to be looking at part 5 which is all about the factors affecting river discharge. Factors affecting river discharge. There are many reasons for why a river may have a discharge which increases or decreases over a point in time. For those of you that missed our last video on the storm hydrograph, the discharge is basically the volume of water that is flowing through the river at a given point in time. Now, these factors can be caused by either physical features or human features. Physical features are factors which make the discharge levels change that occur naturally in nature. And human features are factors which make the river discharge change, which have been influenced by people. So the first factor that we're going to look at is the intensity and duration of storm. So if the rainstorm is very intense and it takes for a very long time to sort of rain out, there will be a lot of rain in the river. So this means that there will be a steep rising limb produced from the amount of water that is falling in, which overdoes the infiltration capacity. So what this means is if the river is infiltrating a lot of water, the rate at which this storm is sort of happening at will overdo that rate of infiltration. So more water will be entering the river than it can be exiting, hence making the river discharge increase. Another factor affecting river discharge is the antecedent rainfall. What antecedent weather really means is weather that has happened prior to an event. So if there was previous rainfall before a new storm, the source pores will already be saturated. This means that they're already going to be full up with water. So if it rains again after a previous rainfall, the source pores are already going to be full and there's not going to be much infiltration happening. As a result, the new water will just fill up the discharge at a faster rate, causing the discharge to increase. Next up is a type of geology. So the porosity or permeability of the rock will decipher how steep the rising limb will be. What this means is porosity is the amount of water that can flow through the rock, and permeability is the amount of water that can pretty much seep through from one side to the other. So if the geology of the rock is not very permeable, there's not going to be as much infiltration because it's not as porous or permeable, so not as much water can travel through it. This means because the infiltration rate is very low and the amount of rain coming in is a lot higher, the discharge will increase. This is simply because there's less time for the um, river to infiltrate the water, so as we said, the rate of infiltration is smaller than the rate of rainfall itself. The size of the drainage basin. If the drainage basin is much smaller, there's going to be a shorter lag time, so therefore um, the discharge will increase faster. What this means is that if there's a small surface area of the drainage basin, when it rains, it's going to be a lot easier for all of it to land into the river, and that's because the surface area is very, very low. As a result, the amount of water falling into the river will exceed the infiltration capacity, or the rate of infiltration, and as a result, the size um, an amount of discharge will increase over time. Next up we're going to look at the shape of the drainage basin. Now a steep sided drainage basin, or one that has a much steeper relief, is going to have a shorter lag time than an elongated one. This is because there's going to be less time for the river to infiltrate all its water that has because when the rain then falls onto the river valley, the steep sides are going to carry it into the river channel at a much faster rate. Therefore, the rate of water entering the channel is going to exceed the rate of water leaving the channel through infiltration, and as a result, discharge will increase. The temperature is another factor which is going to affect river discharge. If the temperature is much higher, the rate of evapotranspiration will increase. So this means that the amount of water in the river will then begin to decrease once there's more evapotranspiration. So when the um, rain then arrives and the water levels are going to rise, um, they're not going to flood or the discharge may then decrease because more of it is going to be evaporated than it may be falling into the river channel itself. Now notice how this is a human and physical factor. The temperature is something influenced by the sun, of course a physical factor, however the temperature can be influenced by human behaviour. So the greenhouse effect or global warming is influenced by the amount of greenhouse gases that are put into the atmosphere and this is a human cause. So temperature can be both human and physically um, orientated. Deforestation. If there's going to be less vegetation in an area, there's going to be less interception. So what this means is that when it rains, the vegetation is going to take up more of the uh, rain that falls in. 
so as a result much more rainfall will get into the river and its discharge will increase. Urbanisation The urbanised land can prevent infiltration and increase runoff. So what this means is that if we have sort of more concrete roads, there's going to be a lot harder to get the water to infiltrate through the concrete. So as a result, there can be an increase in runoff, which leads the water to get into the river. And as a result, the discharge will increase. However, runoff can also be an output. So the runoff can leave the water out into another place and not the river. So urbanization can decrease or increase the levels of river discharge. A lot of towns also have drainage systems where if it rains, a lot of the water in the town will go through drainage pipes and out into a sewer system. So as a result, if this is in place, there's going to be much less river discharge because much less water is going to be running off into the river itself. So this is a human factor. Okay, what I've done here is I've prepared some questions. What I would like you to do now is pause the video, attempt this quick summary and hit play whenever you're ready to see the answers. Okay, so here are the answers. If you did get all of them right, congratulations. I would advise you to move on to the next video. However, if you did not, just simply pause the video and go over your notes once more, or rewind to see where you may have gone wrong or missed some information. Then have another go attempting them so that you're sure that you're completely ready for the exam. Okay, so this has been the end of the lesson. Thank you so much for watching as always, and we'll see each other in the next lesson, which is part six, erosion. If you have any more revision material that you want to go over, be sure to check out www.revisealevel.co.uk where there's a lot more revision material for a wide range of subjects. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.